Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of 247 DIY. Today I've got a bit of a quick one for you. I'm going to show you how to go ahead and change the battery out on your riding lawnmower. So as you can see in the background, I just took receipt of my new mower for the season. It's a bit of an upgrade and it's brand new, so it's not going to give me the headaches that this one was giving me. I think I spent more time repairing this last year than actually mowing. Uh, but I still want to keep it around. I'm going to take the deck off of it and uh, just use it to haul around my little utility trailer for yard work and whatnot. Uh, but the battery decided to go on. It just won't hold the charge anymore. I'm not surprised the battery's uh, real old on it. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get that changed out. So the first place we're going to start is back here underneath the seat. Uh, most riding lawnmowers, this is going to be the location. Depending on your style motor, it may be somewhere else. Uh, but generally on your lawn tractor style riding lawnmowers, it's going to be right back here under the seat. So we just flip the seat up. Um, now this is gonna be specific to this model Craftsman. This is an older Craftsman model 917.271530, uh, but the general concepts for this is gonna be uh, all the same for the vast majority of makes and models riding um, lawn tractor style motors like this. And just to make life easier, this one has this little flip down debris cover. Uh, but it doesn't really like to stay up, it's just gonna get in our way. So I'm just gonna take a little piece of tape I had on hand. I'm just going to tape that up to keep it out of our way. So before you go ahead and replace anything, um, obviously you need to know what battery needs to go back in. That information is going to be on the sticker on your battery. In this case, this is an SP-35R. When you're shopping for batteries, um, just note there can be different cold cranking amp differences on different batteries. This one, this one in particular is a 300 cold cranking amp battery, uh, but it's also not the original battery. If you're dealing with the original battery or you know what the original battery's cranking amps were, you can go larger, but don't go less than what the original battery was. So the one I picked up, I just picked up a real cheap one from Walmart. They generally carry a lifetime warranty with them. As far as I know, again, like I said, I don't care too much about this mower. It's just gonna be used for utility stuff, but it does have, I believe, slightly more cold cranking amps than this one. So it should be fine, but it's still the uh, 35R group size for this battery. So we're going to start by removing our negative battery terminal and in this case I'll be using an 11 millimeter wrench. 11 millimeters isn't terribly common so that just probably means this is a standard size nut on here but 11 millimeters is going to work just fine. Make sure you retain the nut and bolt for the new battery because the new battery is not going to come with new hardware. and just tuck that battery cable up out of the way. We'll do the same thing on the positive side. Now the positive cable here, as well as the hardware, has a bit of corrosion on it. I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up. I'm just gonna use like a Scotch-Brite pad, get all the corrosion on there, get nice clean metal for a good connection for the new battery. Um, in a perfect world, you would coat um, these terminals with some, uh, they make a special uh, battery terminal grease that helps prevent this corrosion. I don't have any on hand, and like I already said a couple times now, I'm not too concerned about doing things perfectly on this mower. As long as it starts and runs, that's really all I care about. So that's disconnected. We can go ahead and lift the battery up out of there. And since we're right here, we might as well clean the area up. I'm just going to grab my shop vac. We'll get all these lawn clippings out of here. And then we can go ahead and install the new battery, same way the other one was installed. And I'm realizing now that uh, I lied to you, and this is actually 230 cold cranking amps. It's less than the battery was in there. If I remember right, when I was looking at what battery to get, the OE battery was less than 300 cold crank amps. I don't know if it was exactly 230, but it was less than 300. That was an interstate battery that was replaced out at some point. And I'm realizing now, I put it in backwards. You wanna orient it so that your terminals are gonna be in the same position, because obviously you're gonna have one cable, one long cable and one short cable. They need to be able to reach where they're going. So, And now we'll just go ahead and hook everything back up the way it was before. I did clean off some of the corrosion on this. Honestly, it was, uh, it was on there pretty good. So 
I just got the points that are going to make contact with the terminal here real good. I made sure I got some uh, bare copper that was good and clean to make sure that we have a nice connection here. And it's always good too to remember, uh, especially when you're working with this positive battery terminal, you're going to be using metal tools and like for example, um, the body here of the lawnmower is metal. It is painted, um, should give you a little insulation, but you want to avoid touching anything metal and especially avoid hitting the negative terminal on this battery because um, it will arc, usually not enough to cause any major problems, but enough to give your heart a little jump. that one tightened down and then I'm pretty sure it was off frame when I was shop vacuuming up all the stuff I accidentally shop vacuumed up the hardware for the negative terminal here so I've just got some spare hardware that I had laying around that's the same size and we'll just go ahead and use that And there you go, there's your battery all installed. I'm actually surprised that this battery doesn't have any sort of tie down uh, to keep it in place. You're probably gonna have that on your lawnmower, some type of spring clamp or a nylon strap that goes over the top of the battery to keep it held down. Um, but the other one was installed just like this for years and years and never gave me any problems. So just remember if you're doing your battery, you might have to deal with that. We put our little protective cover back down and then put our seat back down and we can fire it up. So there you go, that's all there is to it. Hope you guys found the video useful. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Feel free to leave a comment below, and if you're not subscribed already, please consider subscribing. Thanks.